ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस इसी वक्त वेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रभु पा ट्रांसलेशन Brahma is the personal representation of the supreme personality of Godhead as a source of transcendental sound and is therefore above the conception of manifested and unmanifested. Brahma is the complete form of the absolute truth and is invested with multifarious energies. Purport: The post of Brahma is the highest responsible post within the universe and it is offered to the most perfect personality of the universe. Sometimes the supreme personality of Godhead has to become Brahma, when there is no avail, available living being to occupy the post, in the material world, Brahma is a complete representation of the supreme personality of Godhead, and transcendental sound, pranava, comes from him. He is therefore invested with multifarious energies from which all the demigods like Indra, Chandra, and Varuna are manifested. His transcendental value is not to be minimized, even though he exhibited a tendency to enjoy his own daughter. There is a purpose for the exhibition of such a tendency by Brahma, and he is not to be condemned like an ordinary living entity. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta part. So here in this verse, the position of Brahma is being explained that he is occupying the highest responsible post within this universe. so in this world there is struggle for power struggle for position struggle for posts just now election is going to come so every party everyone is strategizing planning so the highest so even the post somebody may be occupying a very high post he may be prime minister of the country he may be president of united states but these all are one post is higher than the other so we may from mundane material estimation consider that oh president of united states but here you seeing that brahma is the highest responsible post in the universe in this universe many many planets are there and we have some idea as to what is the size how big it is galaxies so brahma is the first created being and most responsible post within the universe and then <clears throat> prabhupad explains unfortunately in present times we have very responsible post prabhupad criticizes democracy democracy he says by the voting method people who are ignorant people have who have no idea as to what are the qualities which a leader should have so by force by money power the other day we were discussing many even people with criminal background they occupy the posts and that's why there is lot of chaos in the society so here prabhupad is mentioning that brahma this post which is the most responsible is offered to the most perfect personality of the universe and sometimes when such an exalted personality is not available there also some leadership <laughs> when it is not most perfect personality sometimes supreme personality has to become brahma when there is no suitable living entity to occupy the post and then prabhupada mentioned the material world brahma is a complete representation of the supreme personality of godhead and is bestowed with multifarious energies the entire creation the entire praja he is interested the responsibility 
from which all the demigods like Indra, Chandra, Varuna are manifested. Then Prabhupada clarifies because we have this pastime of Brahma, uh, where he exhibited the tendency to enjoy his own daughter. So sometimes <clears throat> we devotees can, you know, because Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna is our worshipable Lord. So we can develop some kind of a I won't say uh, critical attitude, but <clears throat> that devatas, they are also conditioned souls. They also are like us, jivas like us. They are not Vishnu tattvas. But we have to give due respect. Here it is mentioned, Brahma is not an ordinary living entity. He's saying is complete representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And when such pastimes happen, just like Brahma with the tendency to enjoy his own daughter Prabhupada writes, there is a purpose for exhibition of such tendency by Brahma. So Lord's and Lord's devotees' pastimes, Leela's are just like Krishna says, Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yo Veti Tattvataha so unless we understand from the right source, from in the right parampara, then definitely there is a good possibility of we misunderstanding it. So Prabhupada is clarifying, although such pastime is there, but we should not think that Brahma is also conditioned, so he also is lusty. And how exalted personality Brahma is, how wonderful when we read this Brahma Samhita, prayers offered by Brahma, he has perfect understanding of who Krishna is. And the whole prayer is about glorifying Krishna, his exalted position. <clears throat> so, just like Brahma is the first created being and Lord entrusted upon him the responsibility for secondary creation. The Lord is the supreme creator. He is the primary creator. He is the cause of all causes. But they are secondary creators. And then Ishwara, Parama, Krishna. There are many, many Ishwaras. There are many, many controllers. There are many, many creators. So, <clears throat> just like Brahma is entrusted with the responsibility of secondary creation, likewise each one also, as I mentioned there are many Ishwaras, Prabhupada explains every one of us are Ishwaras to some extent. So it's very instructive that how Brahma is such an exalted devotee, such an exalted personality. He has been given the responsibility with no, he has no idea how to execute it, how to go about, but he is obedient to follow the orders. Because of his obedience and desire to follow the orders, the Lord very mercifully guides, directs, instructs. And that's how he got to know about Tapa. He does Tapasya and, and <clears throat> everything is directed by the Lord. What steps to be taken? So, just like we have many Ishwaras, we also are, in one sense, creators. We also are assigned different responsibilities, different services. In the outside world, 
many things which a person does is actually limited by his karma the intelligence the skills the capabilities what he can do how much he can collect how much he can own is largely determined by his karma although because this is material world it may look like oh he worked so hard oh he he was so so why is he made the right kind of investment at the right time he could read the markets well but ultimately it's a game of karma if there is lot of punya karma then you get you are blessed with material opulence happiness material happiness and the reverse also is true so when devotees we are assigned some services some responsibilities something we are asked to do here we have to learn what should be our mood what should be our consciousness what should be our attitude if and just like brahma did tapa and everything was revealed to him prabhupad also has given us tapasya which we can in kali yuga do it it is not very austere tapasya simple tapasya prabhupad has given us and if we do that tapa if we do that our daily sadhana our daily chanting of rounds everything what is required will be provided by the lord and we will be able to see we will be able to observe if we are rightly situated we will be able to experience that we are able to do far beyond our material abilities and if we are not properly situated if we are we don't have the right understanding some kind of pride can set in that i collected so much i did so much i did this i did that so that's why we have to be this our whatever services we are doing it has to be backed with proper sadhana sadhana gives us the context the right understanding otherwise sometimes when we achieve big for the service of the lord our under thirst we doubt it it can also fan our false ego it can also fan our pride we can become proud sometimes when we get victory we are able to do some things we are very charged up very motivated sometimes result don't come we get depressed in the initial stages it all this will happen because ours is not pure devotion our motivation is not pure we are we we are driven with lot of we are doubting our anarthas so prabhupad in one of the purport mentions sometimes devotees suppose some services assigned we don't get the results let's say a devotee is going out collecting donations he doesn't get we can get depressed or when results come we can get completely you know elated and can start thinking that yes i am great i am doing big big service so here what is the learning from brahma we should make a sincere effort to implement the will of krishna this is what brahma is doing sincere attempt to implement the will of krishna prabhupad mentions or chaitanya mahaprabhu and we should not be concerned with victory or defeat prime objective should be the will of the lord 
that's why even in our service it's good if we are doing authorized service somebody may say it's devotional service authorized service and we should not be concerned with victory or defeat our only duty is to work sincerely so that our activities may be recognized by krishna this is what brahma is doing and because brahma is doing here we are seeing that he is a perfect personality that's why krishna has chosen him for that post now somebody may say no 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 brahma he is such exalted dude who we are just like we said we are ishwaras to different degrees we are controllers to different degrees we also just like brahma is assigned some responsibility in the mission of the lord we are also assigned to to responsibility we are so small ishwaras brahma is also one kind of ishwara supreme ishwara is krishna we also have some responsibility brahma has bigger responsibility krishna everyone is trying to execute the mission of the lord this verse is very instructive for the sincere workers in the krishna consciousness movement we should not be jubilant in victory or morose in defeat conditioned soul means these are the symptoms jubilant in victory morose in defeat things don't happen as per my expectation the other day i was reading an article which says that everything what is happening in our life is actually comprised of only five things five types of events just like you have the baseline the height of the land can anyone tell me with what reference it is measured sea level so and so is 2000 feet above sea level sea level is the base so base is when the results or the events or what happens to us is as per our expectations that's a base it meets our expectation people have no problem with that they have some expectation how world should behave how event should happen what results i get of the efforts i put if it matches what i am expecting i am happy but life is not always about what we expect what we want and so another kind of activities are where the results or the outcome of our effort is much more than our more than our expectation so that's a second kind of thing third type anyone can suggest huh where the outcome or the result of our activities is much lesser than our expectation fourth type ha huh? so i repeat the base level is where it matches our expectation outcome one kind of where it exceeds our expectations what's the problem with that if it exceeds our expectation if we are properly situated we will know how to handle it and if you are not properly situated like many people become suddenly rich they don't know how to handle that richness they will start showing off they'll buy all these luxury things they'll get into bad association they cannot handle that they're not mature enough to handle ego pride so that's why krishna is cautious if we are also not properly situated we cannot handle the success which can 
I was discussing with Madhubu in one of the time. We are building temple for Krishna. We are building a project. The other day, there was news. Anonymous donation to IIT Bombay. 160 crores. It landed in the account. Don't know who is the donor. Anonymous. One person. 160 crore, you can build full temple. It's a very small amount from Krishna's point of view. For, forget Krishna's point of view. Even from so-called billionaires and billionaires of this world. That's why one person decided 160 crores. So I was discussing that how devotees, you know, how much you are struggling, VCM, this thing, that thing, that thing. It's not a big amount. But Krishna does not want to, if this much big amount comes directly, where is that struggle, where is that dependence, where is that purification, where is that learnings? So the Lord does not necessarily will take us through that journey. So we should be mature to handle events which exceeds our expectation. Somebody is going out for collection, suddenly big collection comes. Many times it happens when big collection of devotee thinks over oh, the next one month, two months I can relax. The another kind of event where it does not match our expectation or efforts, we can get disappointed or depressed, lose enthusiasm, lose motivation. What is the fourth and fifth type? Anyone? In life, there are certain outcomes which are which we had never thought of. It's completely unmatched to our expectations which we also call as miracles. Can we give example from Krishna book of one miracle? Sudama Vipra. He went, met this thing, came back. Where is my heart? Where is the place where I sit? And what is on the negative side? Five types I told. One is exceeds expectation, below expectation. One is miracles, where it is not Five times, ten times, thousand times. It's unbelievable. It can happen in devotees' life, just like Sudama. Krishna generally does not sanction for, for Sudama kind of devotees. Yes, he sanctions. Because again, needs the right maturity, Krishna consciousness to handle it. And what is the fifth one? Anyone? Any guess? Opposite of miracle, trauma, where the outcome is, is thousands of times worse than what you expected. Trauma example, where you never expected and Many ex huh? They were they were supposed to be the rulers. This thing banished in the forest. Again, we'll have to think through. I've not thought. So completely, a devotee can be shattered. That's why Krishna, yasyaham anugrahanami, hari sheta dhanam shanai. So that Krishna very, to that person he is extremely favorable, he, he gives that traumatic experience also. He may, because he knows that he will be more and more dependent on Krishna. But otherwise somebody can completely lose faith, can get shattered. So here we are seeing Brahmaji is very nicely with good consciousness 
Since we act under the control of supreme according to our karma, no one is independent from Brahma down to an insignificant act. And whether we are defeated or victorious, the supreme Lord is always victorious because everyone acts under His directions. Prabhupada emphasized Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, daily reading, daily hearing, Shravanam, Kirtanam. Why? Because otherwise, if we are not backed, our actions, our efforts, our activities are not backed with this understanding. Then if we get good results, we will be boosting our false ego. If you get bad results, demotivate. We may even doubt, where is Krishna? I worked so hard, nobody is giving money. All this is philosophy. Krishna is the cause of all causes. He is the supreme controller. Pride in victory or moroseness in defeat is useless. One should fully depend on the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is responsible for victory and defeat of all living entities. Victory or defeat depends on the Supreme Lord. You have the right to perform your prescribed duty but you are not entitled to the fruits of action. Now somebody may say, one can also have a wrong understanding that Krishna is saying, you have the right to do your duty, don't be attached to results. So I don't have to bother about results. If it comes good, if it doesn't come good. That also is wrong understanding. Arjuna was asked to fight, okay, I am half-heartedly fighting. Krishna has told, I have to fight, I will fight. If I win, okay, if I lose, okay. You have the right to perform your prescribed duty, but you are not entitled to the fruits of action. One must act sincerely according to his position. Victory or defeat depends on the Lord. As a wooden doll that looks like a woman or an animal made of grass and leaves cannot move or dance independently, but depends fully on the person who handles it, all of us dance according to the desire of the Supreme Controller the personality of Godhead. No one is independent. You see in this world, as I was telling you, many Ishwaras are there, many controllers are there, big, big people running multinational companies, big, big empires, presidents of big, big countries. But actually if you see, they may be apparently look like big controllers. But some very fundamental basic things, they are not in control. Can you give me an example? Their bowel movement, they are not in control. Their heartbeat, they are not in control. How the hair is growing is not in control. How many hairs are graying is not in their control. Some technology you can use, how they are aging they cannot control. They can do some bit of health, fitness, nutrition. Some of you probably not there that time. Ronald Reagan, he was president of United States for two times, two terms. And to be president of United States, they don't have, they have very rigorous process. There are many, many debates organized nationwide and you know, so people actually watch what is his thought process, what is his vision for the country, how he's going to lead. So people put questions and then debates organized on various world issues, not just American issues. World issues, they have to have their thoughts, their vision. So he was president for two terms. And then post 90s after he this thing, he was he was suffering from Alzheimer's. There was a time when he his brain had become such the uh, so to say because of Alzheimer's disease affected, he could not even remember that he was the president of United States. Still, as ex president, you know, they have they are invited, they are for some functions and all that thing. 
so he would be called he would facilitate the ex president of united states but he will uh, what's going on he's like a vegetable such charismatic leaders even atal bihari vajpayee was such a charismatic leader the, the his speeches used to really move people you know emotionally emotionally charged desh bhakti could arouse and there was a time when he was bedridden he was given bharat ratna and you know somebody went to his place to deliver that so here we see big big controllers big big controllers first janma mrityu jara vyadi takes it stall second thing is even apparently in their good condition it looks like they are controlling many things big big controllers may be controlled by their wives and is a fact so <clears throat> here it is said that no one is independent everyone is under the supreme control of the lord very nice example is given as a wooden doll that looks like a woman or as an animal made of grass like puppets it mo- cannot move or dance independently but is completely dependent on the person who handles it we are all servants of krishna and we have no independence we are dancing according to the desire of the supreme personality of god it but out of ignorance and illusion we think we are independent of the supreme will nityam bhagavat sevaya or hearing daily is important to reinforce to hammer this understanding in our consciousness otherwise conditioned soul we have come in this material world we desire to be independent enjoyers to be independent controllers forgetful of krishna and material world is so designed that actually that is the meaning of illusion you can believe you can you can actually see that yes i did it i am the control that is illusion yes i am the enjoyer krishna is this material world is created to give that the living entity who has that desire so that an opportunity is given to fulfill that unlawful desire that's a different thing there will be reaction and the uh, jiva has to suffer the consequences there is a common saying in bengal that the lord has 10 hands that means he can control everywhere the eight directions up and down if he wants to take everything away from us with his 10 hands we cannot protect anything with our two hands similarly if he wants to bestow benedictions upon us with his 10 hands we cannot factually receive them with our two hands and our hands are our hands are first there are two hands second very small okay the conclusion is that even though we do not wish to be separated from our possessions sometimes the lord forcibly takes them from us and sometimes he showers us benedictions upon us which we are unable to receive them all therefore either in opulence or in distress we are not independent everything is dependent on the sweet will of the supreme personality of god so this is the if you see all the important nice pastimes bharat maharaj ambarish maharaj and all the prithu maharaj great devotees they are they are in their actions in their behavior the symptoms are manifest this understanding is manifest chitra ketu he was cursed by mother parvati actually from his side there was no fault but how he responded to apparently wrong understanding because of which he was cursed one time there was a devotee by name prabhu sanjay govinda his father 
was very upset by his joining and his father was an atheist temperament he was not at all believing in god sometimes in america most of the people are religious they may be christians many devotees parents also when they joined giriraj maharaj parents they came to meet prabhu pad they were very rich they were very religious so this devotee's father was very upset very angry and also he was an atheist so just like any father they make attempts to get the son back so he came he the son joined and then he came to the temple to take back his son and he was very angry very upset and you know wanted to who is the top man here so that he can meet and you know create a ruckus and take that son back fortunately on that day prabhupad i don't remember the place prabhupad was there in that temple he was traveling and prabhupad had come to that place and uh, all the devotees from different nearby places had accumulated and you know kirtan was going on and all that so it was all very you know for a westerner who doesn't believe in god it's all very unusual things which are going on kirtan and the devotees are so then at one point of time the announcement was made the prabhupad was about to come come from this and everyone was expecting you know enthusiastically doing kirtans waiting when prabhupad would come they'll get the darshan they were eagerly waiting and this man also is standing in the back with a stern face watching all that what's going on then from a distance prabhupad walks in and suddenly when the kirtan stops and everyone jai shri la prabhupad and everyone pays obeisance and jai govinda is surprised seeing his father also paid obeisance bhati ganga mein so later jai govinda met his father and said you also paid obeisance so his father said that moment i saw that man sitting from that man he is special i could not stop myself pay obeisance and it seems later on he becomes a devotee also his father so <clears throat> prabhupad used to say that by your conduct i will be judged by your conduct people will judge me judges it is just true everywhere the institution if you go to an organization the way people behave the employees behave you can you can get some good idea about the organization so we as devotees we are representing prabhupad prabhupad's mission executing the mission of prabhupad executing the mission of krishna we have great responsibility sometimes <clears throat> as i said we can we can be we get something more something below if a conduct is not appropriate then we are not properly representing spiritual people will judge us people will judge the movement prabhupad our spiritual master based on our conduct sometimes we also can be very loose in our talks can be very critical criticize people criticize after all their karmas we have to give due respect 
to everyone prabhupad says even to an ant karmis wherever they are with whatever knowledge they are they are in one position if suppose somebody has been given some power some position some due respect has to be given why to a big person even to ant respect has to be given Sadhya Gaur Prabhu was taking one class in Ahmedabad recently, one temple president meeting. <clears throat> so he was telling that as devotees, being critical wherever possible, we should try to build the bridge. He gave an example, very nice example, that once there was a uh, Ganesha festival happening, Ganpati festival happening. It's very Here it happens, big way, Maharashtra. So, so big pandal was there, and devotees had put. Uh, they had because lot of lakhs of people are going to come, so they also got one stall. That organizing committee they approached, and they also got one stall for this thing. Now, sometimes if we are not this thing, we can be very critical. Ah, the devatas, and I don't. We don't worship devatas. Ganesha is a devata, and it can offend people. There are people who are coming. If, if people are coming to book stall, he says, "No, no, no. This, only Krishna is the supreme Lord. All this, these are all devatas. We don't worship. We don't this thing." So he gave example that how a devotee, without criticizing, without demeaning their faith. can present krishna consciousness so there was a devotee it actually happened he went to this thing and then people were coming and all that so people were all ganesh bhaktas you know they had come with uh, darshan of and many people may not have understanding of gita or krishna is supreme lord devatas for them krishna ganesha is supreme lord is god so they had bhagavad gita so the devotee started explaining all these things you know this gita you know who has written this gita this gita is part of mahabharata and ganesha himself lord ganesha ved vyas was narrating the whole thing and entire mahabharata that gita ganesha <laughs> and people all ganesha devotees are buying in huge numbers no this is not misrepresentation of the truth sometimes you know we can be very critical we can be proud that yes i am krishna devotee all these are all they are worshiping devatas what is that kama is ter ter prathit gyana prapadyante anya devata chotu is all so we have to be not very boastful not very audacious not very yes we are fortunate we are blessed we have right understanding we have understanding of the supreme lord but that doesn't mean that it gives us a license to criticize anybody who has not following the right understanding yes prabhupa did that there was a purpose he is an acharya he was at times very critical he criticized the nobel laureates and scientists and all that thing <clears throat> yes we are his followers but that does not give us a license just like prabhupad used the word rascal so freely sometimes devotees also use this word it is not appropriate among devotee community or we are going outside meeting somebody is a rascal so we have to and this whole thing comes when we are having mature understanding of krishna consciousness we have to represent prabhupada's mission properly our conduct should be good our dealing should be exemplary our krishna consciousness will be reflected how we deal with situations deal with sometimes when 
reversals happen when things don't meet our expectation so in that article it was mentioning the problem is not with miracles problem is not with when things increase our expectation problem is not with when it matches your expectation the real test of a man is known by what he does in this bottom two and for that there are so many past times so many examples in bhagavatam of reversals and how तत्यानुकंपम सुसुमीक्षमानो भिन्जान एवात्मकृत विपाक हृदवागुभिर्दा नमस्ते जीवे तायो मुक्तिपदे सदा भाग मेनी टाइम्स डिवोटीज फील हियर वेन थिंग्स डोंट मैच अप देयर एक्सपेक्टेशन और एज पर देयर अंडरस्टैंडिंग थिंग्स डोंट हैपन एज पर देयर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एज पर देयर thing understanding of what is right or how it should happen start criticizing start blaming and that's where <clears throat> blunders can happen vaishnava prath can happen and one can even lose his krishna consciousness we stop here anyone has any question anything you like भगवदगीतावतरी Vedas, you said which Bhagwat? You said Devi. Devi. Yeah. Ha. The entire Vedic literatures is addressing the needs and growth of the entire spectrum of jivas. human being 4 lakh species so the recommendation that you worship shiva you worship this devata you it's very much part of the vedic process of the, of the jiva going towards ultimate perfection so that way it is recommended and if suppose somebody is doing it we should not openly criticize but that does not mean that everything is same that does not mean that somebody is worshiping ganesha is equal to worshiping krishna because the vedas mentioned you can worship ganesha because vedas mentioned that you can worship shiva yes vedas have there is shiva purana which says that krishna shiva is great is absolute worship shiva because it is meant for those jivas who are in that position who have no higher understanding for them vaishnava naam shatashambhu worshiping of devotee of krishna is greater than even worship of krishna they will also progress so vedas are not vedas are not geared up for giving the absolute highest truth to everyone because they cannot receive it they are not qualified they are not eligible they don't have understanding even in the class you have first class second class fourth class eighth class 10th class otherwise everyone can get admitted in 10th class if they get admitted in 10th class and they start teaching 10th class this thing people will not be able to understand so that's why you have first class so all this puranas and different this thing which is recommending different kind of devi worship and they were it's right it is right for the right those people who are at that level and if those people are doing it it's good for them suppose somebody is a staunch devotee of ganesha we should not criticize you don't have understanding of the thing you are just avidhi purvakam you are doing yes see how intelligently we can give them a higher understanding 
better understanding, complete understanding. So even devatas, we should not openly criticize, even worship of devatas. Although, yes, Krishna says, Itagyana prapatyante anya devata. We may not worship devatas, but those who are worshipping devata, we, in Mumbai, that uh, Ganesha festival happened, we should not criticize. They are worshipping devatas, they are all Ritagyana. Actually, in one sense, if you see, it's good for them. I mean, sometimes I very closely watch from the street below are this thing, many that Ganesha thing, when they install Ganesha, uh, so th- they take a procession. So all the people in one sense who are, you know, Bastiwalas and this and that, who have nothing otherwise, you know, very, they will be drinking liquor, they will be doing all kind of things. You can make out from their face that Bhakti to Dur ki bar. But in that procession also they are jumping, Bappa Goriya, Ganpati Bappa Goriya, and then they are with Tilak and then the Dholak and, you know, all kind of things are there. It has a place. It's good for them. It's good for them. So we should not criticize. You know, so we can uh, we can sit with the loudspeaker on the top. Hey, uh, anya devata. <laughs> from the from the top, and then start narrating Bhagavad Gita and all that. They'll beat us also. And uh, <laughs> no, sometimes we go. We encourage. They, they say, okay, please come for uh, this thing, darshan. Yes, we'll come. We'll go. In that uh, building where we stay, they, they, every house they keep Ganesha for three days, five days, seven days. So they are also there. And so they come and ask us, please come. So we go, pay obeisances, pay our due respects. So why this Puranas are mentioned? Nothing wrong. They are actually they are not misleading people. They are they are for that by people who can worship, who are at that level. And we should also not criticize those people. We'll take one step ahead. In this life or some life, they may get a higher understanding. Yeah. So as you mentioned, that wherever possible, we try to follow the teachings. So uh, is there any question How to build that bridge? <laughs> First, let's build this temple. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Prabhupada had a vision that how this Vedic cosmology, you see, one thing is the facts, and another important thing about fact is anyone? how you present it, how you package it. The Westerners, they are expert in packaging, presenting. The best packaging material, if you see, if you pass through an airport, duty-free shops, the latest printing technology is used in packaging what? Can anyone tell me? This doubt I always had when we used to travel, you know, West, everything is pick and span, so nice, clean roads. And uh, nobody throws things here, there, it's all dustbin, everything is very disciplined. And people have asked me also this question, especially those who have traveled extensively. And in India, now Varanasi things have improved. Otherwise, you know, you can see dirt all around. So-called holy cities, it's very dirty, materially speaking. 
So it's very bewildering for people. This time also when we went, one lady asked me this question. My children asked this question. How do I answer? <laughs> so this doubt was there. Sometimes, you know, you have a question in your mind and, you know, you park it. And it, this is how it happens in Krishna consciousness. As you read more, hear more, those dots get connected and you get an answer. So one time I was passing to this airport and uh, invariably in the airport, especially international flight, there is a place called duty-free shops where you can buy something when you're coming. You don't have to pay duty. All imported goods are there. Uh, so you can buy that. So a lot of people buy liquor, imported liquor and also the cigarettes, Marlboro and all these foreign brands. So I was, you know, you have to pass through that. Just like in Bangalore, you have HDF counters. <laughs> so here also, you pass through those shops. All this liquor bottles, all this best packaging material, all this foil printing, golden embossed, all these things. Because I have some idea of printing, so the latest, best designs, the best colors, the best packaging and all that. But inside that package, what is there? On the package itself is written, cigarette smoking is injurious to health. On the packet itself is written but is packaged so nicely. We have the highest philosophy, but we are lacking in packaging. That's why Prabhupada said, East and West, blind and a lame man. Blind man can be on the, the, the lame man can be on the shoulders of, what is that? Oh, reverse. So, Prabhupada, that's why I envisioned we should have a Vedic planetarium in Mayapur. It is not enough that you have facts. It's not enough that you know the truth. How you present it. If we simply right now say, no, no, Chandrayaan, this all is bogus, moon landing is bogus, and all, it's not going to be. It, you may be telling the truth also. How you present it. How you presented that it, it is convincing for them, it's a challenge. For which we have to use our intelligence, use our brains. If genuinely you want to prove someone, then you have to do a homework, you have to do hard work. Just half big truth, somebody, no, no, they didn't land in the moon, it's all bogus. That will not do, you look foolish. look fanatical. Yes, Prabhupada made a statement by force, we cannot go to other planets, all that. If actually you want to get into that discussion with someone, you have to do your homework. Just ek do fact, either other moon is different, man, this is different, just throw some this thing and you will convince someone. No, you will not convince them and they will go with one opinion about you. And your movement and Prabhupada. So how do we present it? If we have to present it nicely, authoritatively, we have to. It has to. We have to do our homework. That's why Prabhupada said, "Yes, Prabhupada says moon is further away from." But then he wants Bhagavatam, Vedic cosmology. He wants to prove with three D model. with proper reasoning, with pro how this is logical, how with this model you can explain lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, the movement of the sun, the changing of seasons, you can explain. It is consistent with that. Okay. So we'll stop here. Granthara, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Shla Prabhupada ki.